Hey guys, welcome back to Twist and Shout. Of course, I am Shar, and here's part two of Taste and See. If you haven't watched part one, I strongly recommend that you watch that one. And just to catch things up, or if maybe you stumble across this one and not the other, um, what I'm doing is basically just um, testing or experimenting with water, um, bottled water that's sold in the stores, and you know, comparing taste, quality, and I'm also bringing forth the word, um, some insight or inspiration through the word that may can help you in your everyday life and make it relatable to, you know, because when you think of water, it replenishes your thirst or quench your thirst. It replenishes you like when you're dehydrated. Um, it is the number one cure for a lot of common things such as um, headaches or fevers and things of the sort. So just like how naturally the water is good for us and good for our bodies, the word is good for our soul. So that's what prompted me to actually go into it in this matter. So all praises to God for the idea, right? All right. So um, we shot up a couple of scriptures out there um, last time. Hopefully it was a help to someone, inspiration. And like I said, by all means, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. My whole thing is, it's not about me. I'm not trying to get famous. I'm not trying to make money. Like, I literally feel God tugging at me to do my part in the world today as far as um, spreading the word and spreading the gospel. So, with that being said, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and hop into this. Today, we have a interesting um, looking water caught my eye. It's called Core Hydration. Comment below if you ever had this water. Um, this has a pH balance of 7.4. Um, perfectly balanced water with electrolytes and minerals. And let's see here. I think that is all that is in here. Um, this was a little expensive too. Um, like the Life Water, um, you can get two for four. Or you can get one at like 189 or something like that. I believe this one is 179 and the other is 189 alone. Um, it's made in the US, 100% uh, recyclable plastic bottle. It says uh, BPA free, um, ultra purified seven stage purification process. So interesting. Um, if y'all know me, I have whale water and I have a generic um, purifier um, pitcher. I have a purified pitcher that I got at Walmart, just a generic brand. And I did compare like the life water and after the water has been going through the filter at my house. And you can tell the difference in color, texture, taste, obviously. So that's quite interesting. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can open this. Very interesting top that caught my eye because it twists off like this. Finally, so um, I think the top is unnecessary. <laughs> um, like I say, it looks cool. It's why I got it, but it's just like, why do you have to do all that? But anyway, this one tastes more like like water that I can make in my pitcher. Like this kind of tastes like that. Y'all know I like my water cold, so, yeah. I mean, it's good. Like, it just, it, it's, it doesn't taste special. Like, it's good water. Um, You can tell that it's cleansed, if that makes sense. But do I think I'm going to go back in the store and spend two bucks? No, no. But it'll do for now because I like water. All right, so that's my take on the core water. And obviously, you're going to get into the scripture. And let's start with the obvious. Um, today, I want to focus on knowledge and wisdom in the Lord. And we're going to start with Hosea. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 is the scripture that I'm pretty sure you heard and seen a lot. And it says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy Lord. I will also forget thy children. Here that God has, throughout the Bible, we have many scriptures, especially like Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and um, the Songs of Solomon. Like these are books that are driven 
on the idea, the concept that you need the wisdom and knowledge of God. You can't live without it. Even reading this Bible, you cannot just pick it up and just go about it because trust me, I've done that. When I was 12 years old, I got a Bible, first time learning, understanding Christ. And I can tell you, honestly, some things kind of stick to me because I've read it repeatedly. But I'm pretty sure some of these books I read, I can't even tell you what it was about, where it took place, or any of that because I was just reading. Like, I wasn't absorbing the knowledge and wisdom that I'm supposed to when I read the Word of God. I'm just going to tell you a quick reference guide, what I do to actually help me get into the Word, help me understand. We all know, let's be real, even with the shut-in. It's like Satan would literally give you every idea to do any other thing besides literally shut yourself in, pray, meditate to your God, and read this word. But I got a trick for you. Um, here's what normally happens, right? You pick up the Bible, you instantly get sleepy. Who hasn't that happened to? Like, And for me, I, it's usually after the kids go to sleep that you wind down and you say, okay, it's time for me to read. But hear me out. First things first, pray. Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, understanding to... Take heed to your word, to understand your word, and to have time for your word. Simple prayer, it gets the job done, pray in Jesus' name, and he will grant you that. Like I said, when you dealing with real life, real life demons and issues, just picking up your Bible is not for everybody. Like everybody doesn't have that control. Just like with the children being out of school, how hard has it been for you to say, hey, sit down and do your work without the structure of a classroom? When you're in the comfort of your home, there's a difference. If he can take time to wake us up and mold us and shape us, the least we can do is give him time. And like I said, the time is balanced. It's reading, fasting, and praying. Now for me, like I said, um, the devil can either make you do too much or too less. Usually when I'm off, I'm off. Like I'll go days and not really pick up my Bible, right? Let's just be honest. I'm not perfect. And then those weeks and days, I'm just like, I got to get it. I got to get it. Now, obviously, as I become older, I do feel in here like, Shar. It's time for you to pick up your Bible and read. So, I do better. And thank God for the Holy Spirit and discernment because it knows exactly when you need to do it. And it allows you to, you know, you live your life. And then you end up saying, wow, I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit talked to me and helped me to get to this point. Amen. So, with that being said, let me just shoot you another scripture out here. And we're going to Romans. And we're in Romans chapter 10. And it says, verse 2, it says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So, this is in reference to, uh, we know that when Paul was writing, he was writing to churches. And obviously this particular church or maybe an issue that he had brought to them or he was speaking in general and just helping them to go about their business there's a, you will find a lot of church that know how to hoop. They know how to holler. Their praise and worship is on point. But when it comes to what's in here that reflects the word of God is slacked. And you'll find that, and a lot of people complain, because my husband had that um, complaint not too long ago. Like, you go to a church where the music's good. You're like, yes, I, feel, I got my praise on today. But then when it comes to you getting the meat of the word, or even a good strong milk. It's like, this ain't it. Or, because, and I, and I tell you the honest truth. We even been to churches where the Bible wasn't even cracked open at all. And y'all know, if you don't know, don't ever let nobody give you an impression that that's okay. Ever. Some of you may have need to worship God. Some of you may have need that you had a long week and you just got to get it out. You frustrated and you got to dance that thing out. And then there's another group over here that wait a minute i needed that word like maybe i'm not a praiser maybe i'm a thinker and i needed the word and wisdom of god to actually penetrate me here and i get a lot of people argue and say well if you do it during the week you shouldn't have to worry about coming for one day right but like i said it's give and take there's balance in the church of god and when you start seeing things go like the weight the, the little wear like this and it's not because it's supposed to be here be even in the middle and it's right there in the word like you can be oh i'm so happy i'm so glad that i believe in god and jesus christ but then you don't ever take the time to build up your 
spirit man. And you have to because that's what you're going to need when the Bibles get taken away. When it's illegal to even go to church. Or in a situation like this, well, you can't go stand before a man of God. And you still have to be able to say, I know my word. Or I'm getting to know the Father. You're supposed to obtain knowledge, but make sure it's godly knowledge and wisdom and not man-made. And make sure also, because usually, you know, those people that know too much, they know everything. And it's just like, all you get is people like the Pharisees. Jesus told them, you know the law like the back of your hand. But you don't have any love and compassion in your heart. And he needed that. And they couldn't give that because they were so holier than that, right? Balance. And I can honestly say I've been on both ends of the spectrum. It's been moments where I'm like, hey, you should know better. And then it's moments where I say, you know what? God bless you. I'm praying for you. Because you never know what that little compassion can do for someone. And even in my own experience, it's been times people say, you know what? All right, we're going to pray for you. It's all right. And sometimes you need that. Because we know love covers a multitude of sin. Amen. All right, with that being said, I'm going to leave you with one last scripture and one last testing of the core water. Gets better when you actually need it. <laughs> but um, we're going to 2 Peter's, and this is chapter 3, verse 18, the end of the chapter and the end of the book. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. He was advising to grow in grace. So, obviously, um, we don't provide our own grace on ourselves, right? We try to, but then God quickly steps in and he dictates that. But he's referring to the grace we give to each other. Like, you know what? It's, you can make your mistakes. You're going to learn. And we have to do that because we got to understand that we started somewhere. Now, this is not saying that for the rest of your Christian life, you stay one-minded in one direction. No, there's a season for everything and you should be elevating up because the higher you go in your wisdom and knowledge to God, the higher you go in your understanding to help other people around you. So don't ever forget that. All right. Um, I love you guys. I enjoyed you guys. Um, please, please subscribe and share. And don't forget, um, part three will be coming out next. And again, this is Taste and See. I love you. God bless.